Good morning, Andrew. Move this here as well. Good. Good morning. We will give folks two minutes or so to join. Yeah. Hey, Dick. Hello, Anas. How are you today? How, hello, everyone. Doing fine. We have a busy agenda, so it will be interesting. Yeah. Well, let's let's hope we don't have to talk about Bex much further. It uh, seems like it was taken a little bit off course, but uh, maybe it was worthwhile to some. Well, I would I would observe um, there's a couple of a couple of really interesting points in there. One one being the uh, the fact that we have to be international, um, and the other about the you know, in, in some some cases, I think some applications and applicants will have just a different view on what they want to do with that artifact than 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 others. And for me, I think it's just a useful object lesson in why we have to be extremely um, uh, abstract and and not payload uh, so payload agnostic. I guess is the thing uh, in order to keep these building blocks really applicable to everybody. Which is good because I think that was also a place we came to in one seventeen. So we'll uh, we'll keep keep finding that uh, that nice line between the the skit layer and the application layer. Yeah, I agree, John. I clearly we want this to be as international as accepted as possible. So whatever we can do in that regard to make it attractive broadly, I, I think would be to our benefit. Thanks. Okay, Steve's on. That's good. Um, Hi, and Ori's on. That's great. So we've got two, two of the the four very busy people from last week. That's uh, that's enough. Do we, Steve or? Ori, do you know if we're expecting Hank or Yogesh today? Otherwise, I'll just know. take um, yeah. Well, I'll just take you, um, you guys uh, lead. So, seems Hannes, you happy to start now? We've given people three minutes. Yeah, uh, we gave them the three minutes, and here we are. <laughs> Fabulous. So, um, what's up, Steve? I think I was muted when I said I. Uh, uh, he, so yes, he's joining. I think he's a little uh, time zone shifted. So right. Okay. He'll join in a minute. Cool. That'll be good. So um, talking Hank. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm chatting with him on Teams. Let me just go bring him. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So obviously, we want to make sure that we're in a. Um, a good state but if even if not a good state a known state for getting draft submissions in today because today is the deadline um so we also so i want to discuss that and obviously that really steve hank ori that's that's um, really up to you guys um we also need to leave some time um in order to discuss the hackathon targets and presenters uh because we don't have a lot of time between now and the actual meeting to sort out presenters and presentation slots as well. So um, with that, um, I don't know which one of you wants to lead, but um, can we get a view from the editors on where we're at with the submission draft? Yeah, sure. So um, I've been scrubbing through it pretty rigorously over the last couple of days. Uh, there overall, there's just a lot of things that we've been evolving along the time that got a little inconsistent. You know, everything from converging on transparency service and append only uh, log, um, where we're using registry and ledger in a lot of places, 
there was, you know, obviously the changes we talked about last week, which we decided to converge in on using the CWT claims and subject. Uh, and then there was, uh, there was one other thing that just drew my blank. So all of those uh, pieces are, um, are now through the doc uh, consistent. I wanted to give one more scrub uh, today before submitting at 5 p.m. Pacific time. The other piece was there was um, two sections that got somewhere duplicated over the last year or so, or last six months. And both of those got edited independently. So one of the things was uh, an update that I believe Antoine did from shoulds to musts. So I, I did as best I could do to go back at PRs to make sure I was pulling in the most recent. Because like I said, these two sections were duplicated and both edited independently. So I believe I've captured the accuracy of the document while doing content editing. And that's reflected in that PR, which funny enough is PR number 118 for IETF 118. I couldn't make that up. So by all means, please take a look. Um, uh, it's posted. Do you want I will to finish share something? Today. What's that? Uh, do, you, do you want to share something? Um, or sure, I can do that. But if, Give me a second. Um, maybe easier to follow along. Yeah, that's that's a fair comment. Give me one second to bring it up. Um, pull request two. Let me put it on my screen. Almost there. Uh, and then where's the sharing button? You know, I want to share. I don't want to present. If you ask to share. You've asked. Can I prove that? Yeah. Do yeah, I get to right. change what I'm sharing? Do you really want to share your screen? Yes. But which screen? Oh, there I go. Um, okay. The ordering was different than I was expecting. So um, can you guys see my screen? Uh, no. Uh, try it again. Okay. I, at least I can't see it. Yes. And clean it's up starting. 180. It's trying. Yep. It's having a go. It's trying hard. Yeah. Okay. Now I have a red border. I didn't have it before. Yeah. Okay. So uh, clean up for 118 happens to be number 118. Um, I'm going to go by good kismet for that one. And uh, the changes are obviously in the architecture document. And it's kind of hard. There's there's a lot of, you know, if we look here, it's um, this is where the tools can be a little bit different. So things like, you know, capitalization that was the simple things. Um, I re I moved the um, the trans uh, the terminology section to be alphabetic. So there's things like that. I cleaned up the producers consumers to be the issuers and verifiers we've been talking about. Uh, so there's just a lot of edits in that nature. Um, if we go back, for me, one of the things that was helpful also was I used the IETF tools to compare the draft. And that's this. And what I did, this is actually from 117, not just the last draft. So if we compare with this tool, because I'm not going to be able to go through every change here in this call, because there's a lot here. The um, I I guess it's not. Did you click on that? Oh, one? this one. Sorry, I see. It's that particular tab. Give me a second. I'll I'll paste it here. I see what. Uh, yeah, now that's, you see the I think Since it's understand. We're sharing the, a browser tab. Yeah. Now it works. That's excellent. And I'll paste it in the chat here for others as well. Mm -hmm. cool. So, um, you know, I'd encourage folks uh, to, you know, by all means, scroll through and and go back to the PR itself and see if there's anything that I've missed. I've really tried to focus on editorial. It, from a technical aspect, there shouldn't be anything different that we haven't agreed upon. Um, so for instance, feed, see subject, this was this discussion last week, um, and subject is defined here. 
Um, things like, uh, da, 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 where else was some things? Receipt, um, that's fine. I'm trying to think of some couple others. Uh, things like, you know, registry and append only log. There's a bunch of intermixing. And then transparency service is an implementation of where the append only log is the detail within the surface. So I was trying to make sure that that wording um, was consistent throughout. And then if I scroll down further, and some of this stuff is just pulling in spaces to make sure it fit into 72 characters. That's why you're seeing things there. But here, um, so here I added some more examples, which pulled up from below to try to put context. Because as I was reading this, I felt like I needed to see something and this I thought was helpful. Um, whereas there's a lot of things in here again with stuff getting it down. So that's again, not changing content. I don't think anybody's using this big blob of text or anything reading the specs. So we've trimmed it down so it fits neatly. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. The, so here, terminology, this is where we're starting to see um, ordering differences. So this alphabetic on the right. Um, and if I continue to scroll, I'm just looking for the one section where it's like, there's like a big here blanks. So this is where receipt was duplicated. Um, is it just receipt? There was another section that was duplicated. So then on the right, you'll see this is added. So this was just me fixing um, the formatting, the duplicate sections. So like I said, I don't, I'm not going to try to go through each line item here in this call, but just kind of highlight what you'll see as the changes. Registry, append only log, and so forth. So the, and I just added this here. Huge amount of work, stuff. Uh, Steve, thank you. Like cleaning all this up um, and sort of like even changing paying attention to how we use the capitalizations throughout the whole document is uh, is is a huge amount of work already. So big thanks. Thank you. So uh, I, this needs to be submitted by five o'clock today, uh, Pacific time. So what is it? Seven hours from now, approximately. So I'll after the call, I'll continue scrubbing through this. If there's anybody that sees anything that I've missed because I copied the wrong section over, or if I change something that dramatically, you know, changes the definition for somebody, please, by all means, bring that up. But I've been very careful to not to do that. Yeah, we have two persons in the queue, uh, Dick and Bray. Uh, Dick, do you want to go first? Thank you, Hannes. Uh, and thank you uh, for doing this work, Steve. This is very obviously helpful for a lot of us. I do have a question, though. It seems like and I'm just wondering, do, do we still have the concept of a consumer identity or consumer role in this, uh, in, in the, in the concept? Right here. Uh, let me see. So it's, um, can you see my screen, Dick? I see the screen. I'm just, it's just, I'm just, it's just which screen should do you want to show? Uh, this is the, the diff screen. Is that? Yeah. So oh. that if we look at the diff, the oh, left okay. is what we submitted to 117. And on the right is what I'm about to submit today. So yeah, it was so, changed from consumers to be verifiers. Yeah. I think that may be uh, losing some of the visibility of what you know, this, the real, the role that I know my customers are serving, which is consumers in this context. So I'd be a little concerned that it may, we may be losing sight of the consumers if we just refer to people as verifiers, because they may not, they may not be verifiers. They may just want to, you know, pull down a, the payload from a trusted statement to review mm -hmm. it. Should we maybe um, like add um, yeah, here yeah. organizations, uh, consumers, or users? <coughs> users is in some sense a uh, consumer, right? May I so maybe add that this? explicitly here, I would say. Yeah, that's what May I would hope on this that we do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, since I'm next anyway, <laughs> let me just jump in on this one. Sure. Um, 
I like this change to issuers and verifiers. I think it's pretty important um, not to be too, the word consumer is just too, uh, uh, it's overloaded with many definitions. And, and uh, I think it distracts from, it, it gets things confused. So, uh, well, my main uh, comment here is I want to ask Steve if there's any, because shoulds could go either way. It could go toward may or they could go toward must. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if there were any um, should um, questions like that, that you, uh, when you were processing this, you were wondering, gee, I don't know if that's a must or a may. And, and maybe that would be something that we could could look at if, if there were any. Thanks. So there was two things. There was the consumers and the must and should part. So um, we'll, we'll go in reverse. So the from the must and shoulds, uh, I was I didn't see anything that stood out uh, that I felt was vague or unparsable. Just reading through it, because I, I think I've read through it like four times now, and I've, I've got one or two more today. Um, I think there was some questions around in my head as I was reading through it. There's some stuff around receipts I felt like weren't as current as what I think we, our conversations have been. And I think that's because we keep on, we've been focused on the beginning and we haven't gotten to receipts. So that has been, that was the topic of last week that let's get the subject stuff done so that we have a stable document so that we can start working on receipts. This has been one of the things that Roy was pushing on. So we definitely want to get to the, some of that terminology in receipts to um, build upon what you're asking. Uh, but generally I felt it was good. I was, I was much more concerned that I didn't lose some edits when I had to merge these duplicate sections. So I believe I captured those properly. On the consumer one, I, I struggle a little bit with the um, word consumer and verifier, but I agree with what we were just discussing that it can be overloaded because I don't know if um, whoever we want to talk about is not our technical savvy family member uh, will be querying a, a skit um, transparency service directly. They'll most likely be using tools that will make that underlying query on their behalf and give them the information that they're they're looking for. So I, I struggled a little bit. I don't, I wouldn't mind. I don't have any objection to putting the word consumer in here to be organization stakeholders, consumers and users involved in, but that's just to be fair, like that's the kind of edit that I was trying to be careful that I didn't interject words that I knew that we were um, debating about. Like I didn't feel that was my role in this edit was really, it was just content editing. Well, in Oasis, mm -hmm. we're using the term relying party. Uh, yeah, I think that verifier may be a tricky one to use here because uh, I think the way we're using it differs from the way it's being used in rats. Um, what we're looking at here, if I if I understand this properly, is just someone that's looking for information from um, Ledger and not a, a, you know, a party that actually can take information, check it and then return a verification. So that's right. what I thought verification verifier meant in the rats um you know framework so that may i don't know that may be a bad word um yeah i don't uh, like the word I, either I, well, I don't want to That's go back good. to consumer <laughs> thanks yeah relying party i think yeah. makes it very clear that uh the action of the operator is so uh something along those lines i think would be would be ideal it doesn't have to be that but Something that makes it clear this is a reader of the information who is making a decision based on the information that they see rather than taking action and storing that in skit as a you know a notary or a, a receipt uh sender or whatever i can i can easily see these two roles being you know of course uh, part of the whole signatory process where you got an issuer who's trying to issue a trust statement and someone has to verify that before it gets placed into the actual registry itself. But once it's there, there are these, uh, there's this other role, which are the people who want to use the material or look at the information. 
So I think, you know, ultimately they're the ones we're trying to get to to provide these payloads to so that they can use the information. So it seems like we just need to add the one role that the actual you know, users, however you want to call them, consumers, users, relying parties, I really don't care, but it's that, it's, it's that entity that wants access to what's in the registry. And, and here again, I go back to the registry of deeds as a, as an, as a metaphor. You know, someone has to place the deeds into the registry, but then there are people who want to view the deeds in the registry. And that's the role that I think we may have lost when we took consumers out. Thanks. So what, I, what I'll suggest for that one is, and, and I'm, if we can get agreement to it today, I'm happy to merge it in. Like, if there's somebody who wants to make a, a PR or a comment on the PR, so that we can get a little more consensus on that, I, I'm happy to obviously make that change. I just don't know if I should make that change without more discussion, because it sounds like there is some angst around that. So Steve, I'm, I'm happy to put an issue on this uh, PR is 118, you said? Yeah, number one, PR number 118. I'll put the issue there, but uh, you know, I think we probably need more discussion before an actual pull request to make changes. Um, is appropriate, but that's just what I think we, about it. But keep in mind that we can always change it uh, again if we don't mm -hmm. like it. It would be good to have um, at least a version that um, sort of moves things forward, even though like this PR has a lot of uh, changes in there. And if that's the only thing we are worried about, we are ac actually in a very good state. Thank you. Well, that, that's certainly the one. And I, I look at that, you know, I work entirely, almost entirely on the consumer side. So this is a, this is an area that I'm sort of, you know, sensitive to. Thanks. So I, then I'll put another push. Out. I think, and this has been a bunch of the feedback on the doc in general, is we all tend to read things with uh, biases and interpretation. And as long as, like, Dick, I'm not hearing you say it's it's inaccurate for what you're looking. You're just looking for a little more clarity. So I, I think that is the um, intentional um, breadth that it supports to make sure it supports your scenario, whereas there might be other sections that um, explicitly state one, one way or another that is more problematic. So um, I think we're... It sounds like I, I would interpret that we're good at this point and we can make it a little better, but I don't think that's a, a blocking one right now. And I'll, if anybody objects. Well, uh, Steve, I'll, I'll defer to the consensus on this, but you know, I, I always, as I mentioned earlier, I, I look at this as a, I look for a metaphor here. You know, if, if, if you have issues into a registry and you ver have verifiers for the material that's in the registry, then who is the registry for? Who, who, who is this work being carried out to benefit? What is the purpose? Yeah, and, I think and that, so that's uh, where I think to, the consumer uh, role comes in. Well, we need something that says the actor who looks at the data and makes a decision based on it. Uh, we could call it earthworms or whatever, as long as we define it very clearly. Uh, obviously, the best way to do it would be to get a non-confusing intuitive term, but we may be uh, unable to do that. So I would suggest that we uh, come up with something that isn't horrible. I mean, consumers, okay, uh, if we want to leave it that way, but the, uh, you know, I don't think uh, verifier is very good. Just define it very clearly in our uh, glossary or whatever it is uh, as the actor who looks at skid and makes a judgment based on the data. Yeah, the consumers aren't really performing any type of verification. And again, I go back to the metaphor of the registry of deeds. They're not, they're not verifying the information that's there. They, they're just using the information for whatever their own purposes are. So they're not right. issuers. They're not v verifiers. They are consumers. I don't know what else to call them. I would, I would argue, and I, and I'm, I know I'm pushing this on the one way, is a verifier can be a there's nothing that says it can't be a consumer i can read the information like yeah good enough so i that's kind of how i was like yeah a verifier can be a consumer as well 
Okay, uh, you know, I've, I've stated my position on this, Steve, so I think I'll just <laughs> say to today. You, you know, well, you just have to need in the queue as well, so you, that's uh, you, good. You've got a couple of hands in the queue yeah. here. Yeah, go ahead, Hank. You're next. Yeah, next. I, I just want to support the term relying party, and, and I think the term verifier is, is loaded in that it kind of makes it seem like there is one true uh, interpretation to take from the mass of data or individual statements or whatever people are looking at. And in fact, I think different relying parties, uh, which is a term that I've seen used for a long, long time in this context, or a relying party takes all the information they see and they decide whether or not to rely on it. And they may have a different um, you know, context. They may know things that aren't public. They they may have a higher threat level. I mean, who knows what? But the, the point is whether they choose to rely on, on something for a particular purpose. And so I don't think verification, I mean, I, that will involve, you know, some very technical checking of signatures and stuff, but there's also uh, other aspects. So I think for most of the uses that I hear people talking about, relying party is a, is a very good term. Should we let Hank uh, speak as well? Why start now? <laughs> well, because he was in the sorry, queue for a very long okay. time. Sure. Um, so sorry, I'm super jet lagged. I was awake 26 hours and only slept four. Um, this architecture document is not trying to solve the whole stack from artifact to statement to transparent statement to supply chain actors that rely on it. This architecture is um, the authenticity level. And of course, on the authenticity level, things uh, get issued and there's an entity that has to check the things that are issued in order to uh, enable post-processment and higher layers. I think um, the verification, verifiers is over the term, yes, okay. So let's stick with that for now. Um, I think the, the point of view Dick is missing here is the next layer, that this architecture actually does not directly solve, but it should have an overview diagram highlighting how um, issuer and verifier, I'm using the terms on the right side now, um, interact as uh, roles, and then how actual, um, people in need, so the actors on the supply chain, use these constructs to get what they want. I think it's an application layer, it's a higher layer, and it, uh, it, it is, it, it is um, basically also this higher layer is offloading a lot of the burden of, of how to find out that this is authentic to this document here. And, and, and we can have, uh, for example, the API document, the scrappy document, that is a higher layer, for example, that, that has actual services and humans looking at things want to know things using uh, the underlying terminology here and then maybe the architecture could benefit from a composed view and saying you are here at this lower architectural level that's for the authenticity proofs and such and uh, auditing after the fact and enabling and such and then another layer on top of it and this is how this could in general work uh, to support actual supply chain needs. So I think that is a confusion that we might have. That is just um, me maybe hallucinating after lack of sleep and time lag. But, uh, but I think that could be the problem. Maybe comments on that would be nice. Dick, do you want to join the queue? Yeah, I, are, you, are you still in the queue or is that yeah. another one? I just came back in, Hannes. Thank you. So I guess uh, I've been maybe I've been <laughs> assuming, making big assumptions here that the transparency service concept is really intended to provide visibility uh, to someone of what's in the registry. And uh, so on one side of the fence, we have all of the, you know, all the all the bits and bytes that have to take place to put something into the registry. And then we have uh, all of the services, this transparency service concept that I think provides people uh, access to the information in the registry. 
So I think having the trans, if, if we really just want to talk about the authenticity and the process of storing materials into the registry in some, you know, defined manner, then issues and verifiers would seem to be enough for of the roles needed to do that. But if you want to bring in the concept of a transparency service where people can inquire against the registry, uh, then, I, then I think we just, we, we would be remiss if we didn't fill in that open that open hole about, you know, what is the transparency service doing and for who? You guess. You get. Okay? You may be. You know. You said. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I joined late. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Sorry, I was on mute. I suppose. I'm trying to understand what what is this uh, problem with verifiers. Um, uh, that's a very well known kind of um, actor role in the supply chain uh, using. Um, and this append only logs so what what's the problem there could be other consumers or other other actors like auditors or witnesses but what is the problem with verifier i'm, I'm still struggling to understand why should we remove it from the uh, architecture document my opinion verifier is somebody who does something actively to uh, ensure the information is correct that's the yeah. common yeah. english meaning of the word uh, but a user simply reads the information and assumes the verification is accurate and just uh, pulls it out of there. I mean, so there is a distinct difference between the actions performed by that actor uh, if they're verifying something versus simply using it to, um, you know, read the registry. Yeah, you, you guess this is Dick. I, I'm not recommending that we you know, remove verifiers. In fact, I think the verifiers role is is uh, is is, in, is important. You have to have issues, yeah. and you have to have verifiers. I'm not opposed to it. What what I am suggesting is that we we have removed consumers uh, and replaced it with verifiers. And I think those are two distinctly different actions, right? One is a person actually taking some a verifier, I presume is taking some action to perform a verification and then producing some result indicating that something has been verified yeah. whereas a consumer is simply someone who's you know pulling information out of the registry for their own purposes like oh, like in the oh, registry hang, 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 on a second. hang on a second here so the the append only log is there to keep track of the information we we found when we proved that the identity was valid the counter signature by itself is is all the consumer needs. It's the auditors or people who want to go and validate the, the blockchain or ask for a consistency proof that that looks at the data. There is no consumer need to look at the registry yep. append only log at all. It's meant that Absolutely. they're just saying, hey, it's transparent. You can go and validate it, but it's not a query system. It's not a, a go search it for x y and z it's meant to be the counter signature is there saying hey we validated the identity if you want to check this our math go and look at the registry the append only log so there's getting something gotten crossed here yes i agree with roy and not only that i mean the in the verifier role is precisely to do the offline verification of the cryptographic verifiance of uh, presence in the log without actually going in the log we don't want millions of end users to everybody to query the log and say, hey, can you tell me, is it actually the one which is produced by the log? That is not the intent of SKIT. SKIT uh, the SKIT intention is to have an offline verification or at the end, end users. And that verifier is that role. If, if you want to say any consumer sitting on the top, then maybe it's, I don't think it's the right place here. That's me, yeah. Time check. So it sounds like there's a 
discussion of literally just potentially a search and replace for the word verifier for another term, which is the same definition, just helps with the breadth of what that definition is. I think if that's the level of detail, then we're in pretty good shape and we don't have to solve it today. We can make a subsequent PR on that. So it, I want to make sure, this is Dick again, I want to make sure I'm understanding because I don't want to assume something that's completely wrong. So are we are we saying right now up front that the registry itself, that whatever this thing is, right? I know there's a log involved and there may be other stuff in there, but it's not it's it's not to be used by consumers to retrieve payload data. Is that what we're saying explicitly here? Yes. That's the whole yeah. point of this. We're notarizing okay. something else. Something and not this is not the storage and query system. Okay. So, so what is the storage and query system though? That's well, yeah, hold on. I, I, mean, I think there's, there's it's system. an and it's hold on, let me just I think I want to just add because it's an and not an or kind of thing. So Dick, I don't think your our family members that are non-tech are going to query this thing directly, right? It's it's not a website per se, it's an underlying technology. The tools sure. that our non-tech consumers use will will query the systems to get the information. And some of them is lightweight statements that might be directly on the transparent service. And to Roy's point, for things like SBOMs or other documents that are much larger, it would provide a pointer to where you can get those documents or the document can say this is where the proof was made. So it's it's the underlying tools that will resolve where to actually fetch the content to enable that workflow. There, there is, is a that view that from, a use, from a use case that none of the content ever has right. seen. Right, uh, right. Let's, uh, we have like almost only 20 minutes left. Uh, let's wrap up that topic with John and myself in the queue and, and uh, we need to look at various other things for us. Yeah, thanks, Hannes. So I was, I was in the queue to say a similar thing, but um, just Two, two, two things with the chair hat on. One is at a certain point, talking about stuff isn't going to fix a problem. So you know, we do need to continue our recent good habit of of taking things to PRs and issues. Um, but also to reinforce the point that's been made by by many folks, and to make sure there's no misunderstandings. Uh, at one seventeen, one of the things that we showed. Um, and, and was part of the slides and part of the presentation um, very clearly was this separation between a horizontal technology building blocks layer uh, and the application layer that actually knows what it's looking at. And it's really, really important that we stay on, on message and on mission, that when we're defining things like cozy structures and bits of data that are moving around and stored on disk, that those are extremely um, use case agnostic, application agnostic, um, and so on. Otherwise, it simply won't work. You know, the, the better it is for one, one application, the worse it will be for another. So in the architecture spec in particular, we have to be very careful to make sure that the stuff that we're talking about here and defining is very deliberately not knowing exactly where it's going and not packaged up in 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 nice window dressing for a non-technical consumer for example because that will actually make it worse at the job it's doing that doesn't mean it's not part of an application that eventually delivers what they what the the, the person means but i think so a, a thing that's come up a few times and we we should all um remember is that just because a particular data structure we're defining doesn't end up in users' hands. It doesn't mean it's not useful. It just means it's only part of the of, of the puzzle. So we need to you know, really be quite strict on separating those architectural from technical, from data structure, from use case conversations. Otherwise, we'll keep going around in circles. It's the end of my lecture. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was. Um, so I think the the PR that Steve prepared is is excellent and. Uh, I'm looking forward to read um, the document, the newly submitted document, uh, um, sort of the whole document. And, and I think obviously from the discussion, we have to know that we want to 
continue the discussion about this, uh, the term verifier versus swapping it out with something else. Uh, so that's um, obviously needed and it, but it won't be a big um, issue. I, I expect this to be resolved by either during the week, the ITF meeting or uh, at latest uh, at the ITF meeting itself so that everyone is happy and, and we have a, a good, a few good contenders already. Relying party is something that I feel quite uh, comfortable with. The other, then we drifted off again on the other topic, uh, which is the usual, like how does the solution, the product uh, look like that some company puts together, which will be more than just uh, the specification that we are working on. So there would be stuff built on top of it. And, and I think in future versions of the document, we will for sure manage to just capture this, uh, this view better, like what's in this specification versus what's in a in a in a bigger uh, uh, system to make it to make it usable to the, all the different parties that we have in mind. We'll get there. Um, if it's not there yet, uh, I will obviously carefully read through it and and see where we can add some text. Um, so I think I think we are all on the same line here, but we have different. Uh, priorities and views on, on this topic. Okay, enough rant. Uh, next topic, we still have a, uh, a few other documents which we would obviously like to see uh, being submitted, including the use cases and the scrappy document. Uh, can we quickly talk about those? Um, are we going to see a use case document submission? Can we actually do a working group last call already or is, is like, what's the status? So I just real quick, I did submit the use case document from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and let me pull it up here while we're talking, but it has been updated since the last IETF. Right. But then there was this other, I think um, you submitted the version, but then you had some other dis further discussion. Is there another new version that you're going to submit or is that uh, you leave it at that right now? Uh, I'm checking, was there a PR on the use cases? Yeah, there was a, a a new contributor came in a, a few days ago. Okay, but I'm looking and I don't see any open PRs. Okay, so uh, uh, but it but it sounds like we are kind of um, we are in good shape, in essence, on the on the use case documents. It's there, you, there's a version out and and everything looks great. That's fantastic. Um, uh, what about the API document? Happy? Yeah. Ori, Ori's in the queue, so maybe we can just let him let him tell us. Yeah. Sure. So the Scrappy document received uh, basically one pull request to update some of the API definitions and some other uh, sort of cleanup. I don't think the document is yet ready uh, for working group adoption. I think it should be progressed uh, outside of the working group um, with, you know, consideration for how the architecture documents and other uh, sort of naming and positioning issues uh, are maturing. Um, I just think it's it'll be, I think it, it could be improved substantially for asking for the working group to review it. That's, that's but you're going to submit a version today. I'm sorry. Oh, but but you will still submit a version today. No, I'm not planning to publish any revisions for the scrappy document today. Okay. I was hoping to see a version because then we can actually look at something, uh, something like a text file, and also for the hackathon to have something rather than some pull request. Well, of course, you can always review the editor's draft, but in terms of submitting documents to IETF, I think the document should be progressed more substantially before a new revision is submitted. Um, this is Hank. Are there uh, opposing thoughts on this? I mean, Hannes opposed that once uh, as a chair. Uh, something, but is there anybody here from the WG that uh, wants to uh, see an update uh, that is even lightweight, or is it okay to work on that uh, PR level in at the hackathon? Can, can you post the the link to the chat window so 
like it it sounds like you're too shy. like I, I i remember people submitting like essentially boilerplate documents where there's nothing more than table of contents and they have no problems with that uh so like how bad is it <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should uh, share the diff to uh, from editor's version to um, uh, submitted version. There's a, a CI thing for that. Uh, if someone could do that, please. Yeah, Hank, this is Dick Brooks. I I know that from the use cases that I worked on, um, they were many of them were about how consumers would use this transparency service to get information used in supply chain validation functions. So if indeed the, the scope is just going to be limited to the issuer and the verifier, then you know you, the use cases would probably have to be reduced to just focus on those functions of putting something oh. into the registry. Dick, that is an excellent point. Um, really, it is, I think, and uh, I think I would keep them at the current level so we can motivate the missing parts that you do not find in the uh, core authenticity architecture uh, to make that a usable um, application for the supply chain. So I think I think I think it's okay, but the, but whatever is not solved in the architecture document with respect to these use cases should become the next thing. It's either going to the API or to usage guidance or even other documents so that we can have the whole plethora of things. And 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 I, I, I absolutely got your point because you're saying, well, this is over specified, you know, because you're not even using humans and, and supply chains. You're just looking to on data. But I think the use cases are driving this and 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 when the architecture is stable and you can see but all this is not covered yet, you can literally see the gap for the next document. And that would be the document that probably is exactly what will fill out the picture for your needs. So at least as I hope, so I would not um, reduce them uh, for now. So that's my individual opinion. Yeah, I, I think we're in agreement, Tank. I, I think where it really comes down is this whole concept of this transparency service that we refer to in the architecture document uh, may be a little misleading and we just need to rethink you know that, that there is a boundary here and i think roy pointed it out it, it ends it, it ends with that registration that log and it's not about accessing whatever has been registered into the into the registry it's just about getting material into the registry so the whole thought about what a transparency service does you know you may want to rethink having that in the architecture because i'm not sure it's actually being you know completely fulfilled in the current context. And, and I think that's an excellent point. And that is something we have to address uh, when working on the document uh, very, very soon. Hopefully together. Uh, uh, Dick, are you joining the IETF uh, in, in Prague or you will be uh, remote? Uh, I'm sorry, was that a question for me, Hank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you joining in person or uh, will you join remote maybe? Uh, no, I, I have no travel budget, so I would, I would be... <laughs> Any remotely, thanks. Okay, okay. Yeah, we will try to set up something for remote. I will bring hardware, uh, mics and, and, and cameras and, and such. Thanks. Attending us, or joining us in Prague. So um, I looked at the API document. It's not that bad. Uh, it sounded like it looks in ter terrible shape. But considering that uh, it's better than the content we had in the draft previously, which was extracted from there and then put into a new document. So um, I'm, I'm, of course, there's new work needed or additional work needed. But uh, it's, um, it's, it's fine. I, mean, I I was suggesting submitted as well, but it's Ori's majority if I remember right. It's Ori. Yeah. I think we should refer to him on this one. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, let, let's let's pick that up. Maybe we can pick that up on on 
some other channel because we've got 10 minutes left and we need to sort out um presenters and 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 things uh for uh, for the meeting would it make sense um already meeting first i suppose would it make sense um Ori, for you to talk about um the current if we assume the pr merges you know the, the current state of scrappy in the meeting um because we'll have the benefit of hindsight of the the hackathon by then as well so uh it feels like a section for there and the principles of using open api and stuff would be would would be a good thing to do So I would expect that uh, to obviously we have to talk about the architecture. I'm yeah. not sure whether we need to put the use case document on the agenda. Uh, we could as well uh, do a start a working group last call. Uh, when I read it before this, before Steve published this version, it was already in in, in good shape, uh, and so so it probably like won't change uh, significantly. So I think uh, unless someone strongly objects, I would like to start a working group last call on maybe three weeks, given sort of IDF week and everything um, on the use case document. Is there any sort of strong views about this? OK, I don't hear anything. Hank, uh, you have an opinion? Yeah, I'm in favor of doing a working rules call to uh, um, um, see what's what's blocking and then. OK, I could barely hear you, but I think you agree with me. OK, cool. OK, so that leaves us with the architecture uh, and the and the API um, right now, unless someone is submitting some other documents which we have no knowledge about so do you guys uh so or it says you can sign me up to discuss api and receipts uh but the receipts are being discussed in the in the cozy working group already aren't they sort of so uh, we had a receipts draft previously, and it was intended to be a further restriction of the work that's happening in the COSI working group. Um, so the most common thing we see in receipt as opposed to just signed verifiable data structures is bubble data structures is skit specific claims like this or, you know, other details that you might see in a COSI sign one that represents a receipt. So I'm happy to cover discussing receipts. Um, as conceptual messages, model messages modeled as cozy sign one. I'm also happy to talk about that if folks don't want to cover that this time in skit and I'm in skit and I'm happy to discuss API considerations. Those are ending up to uh, support the agenda on. Dick. Yeah, Hannes, the, the only thing I, I would suggest is, you know, because we're really limiting the scope more than at least I was understanding. Uh, maybe we should consider replacing transparency service with registration service because we're only talking about having issuers and verifiers and that would seem to be really just a function of the registration service. Um, as just as one way to make it a little clearer on you know the limitations that we're we're envisioning in this in this concept. Thanks. Yeah we can uh we can sort of like continue discussion on on uh, improvements on terminology but i'm at the moment i'm sort of uh, trying to find out who or probably john too on who should we ask to put some slides together for the for the meeting because we need to come up with a with an agenda really really quickly um and upload that and so having some the title of the agenda and the name associated uh with it uh, is obviously important for us we could do a hackathon presentation as well, uh, assuming that there, well, I assume that there would be, again be uh, some good outcome of that um, two days. So we can add that. 
and maybe feedback from the use cases. Uh, if there's no feedback, then obviously we can skip it. But uh, yeah. Roy, do you have other suggestions you would like to put on the agenda? I had a question for Ori, actually. Is the consistency of proof and the inclusion proof split or subtlety covered in the COSY spec, or is that something in the, the skit spec? Um, it, COSY spec covers uh, both proof types defined in RFC 9162. My understanding of skit is that skit has only ever been interested in inclusion proofs. And every time we try and talk about consistency proofs, people's eyes roll back in their heads and they're like, I don't know what that is. And they're like, I don't know what that is. I don't know why. I need um, no, my, my, mine don't roll back in my heads. I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't just. just get Sorry, I can't I hear you. Value at it. you. I said, I said, I see value for it 100%. I just, as a lightweight, instead of giving everybody the audit capability is consistency proof. I just wanted to make sure that we were covered, covering them. In the cozy spec uh you, well they're definitely covered in the cozy spec but in terms of skit concept of receipts i don't think we've effectively talked about uh, about uh giving someone a consistency receipt as opposed to an so that is one thing hannes that we should probably discuss at 118 uh, which is which, which is, is which is who do we expect to do the audit like an audit of the reader, a pen only log means you got to take the data and go with walking through it. And when I started looking for people that are doing it against some of our other blockchains, it was like one person out of out of three thousand. I'm just wondering if there is a, a need for the consistency proof to even make that need to go walking through the the, the ledger or the pen only data even less frequent than that. And that's is there a is there an appetite for consistency proof to solve the the lightweight audit capability? Um, um, would you want be willing to give that presentation? I'm going to be in Hawaii, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and I, I, I'm proposing that it's something that you know, Steve, Hank, or Ori could help draft. You volunteering well, this? Okay. One of my I'm team is working. Somebody with, else. Um, yeah, so I, I could uh, I could take my hat off and and proxy one of my engineers because he's working quite um, quite deeply in that space right now. I, and that it is would, it is super important be nice. because it makes a massive difference to this use case. Is you know how how involved does the application need to be with the ledger is is a big question. The, the advantage of the consistency proof means that various implementations. You don't need to understand their their dependently log format. There's a consistency proof it could be supported by 100% of the skip ledgers, which is why I like it. Good. So we're super tight on time. So um, what I would like to ask for is if anybody is wanting to volunteer a topic, either to present or that they want presented, please speak. Um, but but let's not have any more discussion because we need to get everything down in the next 90 seconds. So um, AJ, are you going to suggest something for the agenda? Whenever, whenever. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we'll pick it up on the uh, on the mailing list. So does anybody have other things that they would actually like to present? Um, we've got We've probably got 90 minutes of material here. We haven't got a, a full two hours of material yet. So um, any any takers or suggestions? Thank So I'm happy to have at least uh, one third of the session to be open discussion. I think that's super useful. I think there should be a guided discussion with topics and uh, whatever you want me to present. So there are obvious items like documents, uh, just tell me. I, I can't, I don't want to wrestle that away from someone who wants to do it. If there's no takers, I can, I can present on all the documents, even for me to have already is like, oh, I don't know, I don't want to. So, um, so it's, it's fine. So I can, um, you can, you can call up me as a, as a fallback. Uh, I just want to hear about that. 
shall we um, just a question john shall we um, uh, we are making a working group last one on the use cases is it um, good to rerun the use cases or what is your view uh, before uh, yeah yeah i think so we we need to know what we're building towards and you know, again, I don't, I don't hear everything we're discussing and the stuff on the the chat about consistency proofs and two different kinds of receipts and, and whatever else. You know, all of these things don't um, prevent you know, Dick, for example, from doing what he wants to do. It's just a matter of how you build the flows between the various different bits of tech. So remembering what we're building towards is um, is, is a really useful thing. Do you want to do that, Yogesh? Is that something you could do? Yeah, I was thinking uh, like. Um short 10 minute or five minute presentation on use cases right. just a quick recap of what we had done in the last uh, like how we have built it and uh, close to completion just highlight all the use cases in the document a short summary of how what they are and how how they have come up in the spec no i don't i don't want to sort of like um if we start the working group last call uh, if i can mm -hmm. do that today I, I will actually do that uh okay in perhaps three i was weeks not sure time, about the process here uh then if we should we should be like people hopefully would be reading uh the document and either they are fine with it uh and then we can ship it off to the isg or they are not fine with it then we obviously need to discuss uh, those items in the uh during the meeting but we don't need to basically read out loud the the use cases that people have already read uh, like last year or so so okay okay and then i was i was not sure how how we want to close it logically in the uh, in the itf uh, saying yeah that we logically are done. the process is uh, like if we if we don't make further changes we wrap up a document uh, the chairs issue a working group last call normally runs for two weeks everyone has time to review and uh, submit some comments and then assuming that those there will be comments normally and those need mm -hmm. to be addressed and then the document will be uh, sent to the isg alongside uh shepherd write-up which uh normally john or i would be producing or we can also appoint someone else and uh that will answer a couple of questions for the isg to um decide about uh, how to move forward and to publish it and there will be reviews by others and there will be etc cetera, etc cetera. but more reviews uh, essentially okay then mm -hmm. we don't need to mention explicitly what has happened in no. the last six months okay no okay we ran over time already i need to be in my next meeting and i guess so to many of you um yeah hannes i will you be online later uh to check my pr course. about the references yeah okay thanks you, you need to talk to steve steve is the guy who's holding the pen on the architecture okay Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. I will talk to Steve offline. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Cheers. Thank you. Great. Thanks for your patience, everybody. It's a, a filled full meeting. So uh, yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks, and I'll see many of you in uh, in Prague. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Hey. So.